ready? I'm so ready. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming with the Bros Cast. Yeah, n- hey, new name, almost new year, new us. Yeah, we, we, we thought it'd be uh, yeah, time to change it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we, and this is like literally just today. I texted Nick um, a few hours ago. I was like, hey, I'm like, I'm working on like new designs for the artwork. And I kind of like started doing a couple of doodles with, with that name in mind. And I was like, you know what? Let's, it might be a good idea to change it to kind of shorten it or whatever. Um, yeah, it kind of yeah. sound better. Than- yeah, so I got, I got something in the works for, so I want something a little bit more flashy, I guess, for the artwork. Cause like the one I created, like I did it myself and I, I have like no artistic skills whatsoever. I just made it like on my, one of my tablets or whatever. And uh, kind of just did it super quickly just because we needed something to get the podcast going. Um, yeah, literally needed some sort of artwork. And, and actually, you know, it turned out pretty, I mean, pretty yeah. decent for, like, I think it's kind of, kind of cool, but um, yeah, new year, new, new us. We need, we need a new, uh, you know, new, new, some new artwork. And yeah, maybe, uh, Nick, maybe I'll do a new song or some a new um, intro song for us. You don't you don't even know this, but um, so this is going to be our last live stream on the Atomic Reptar ninety two channel because we have our official Gaming with the Bros, Bros Cast Twitch channel. Woo! So um, official, yeah, just, baby. yeah, just go to uh, twitch.tv slash Gaming with the Bros Cast, and that's B R O S C A S T, all like one word or whatever. Um, I just actually just live tweeted it, so we're ready to go. Um, wow. Yeah, just, we're, we're ready, man. New year, we're on the ball. <laughs> uh, so yeah, fo- follow us there. We will. Um, this will be our last show, and we'll we'll do a couple of tweets and stuff just to let people know. Um, but then we will move over to uh, over to that channel, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. So yeah, that'll be a yes. little bit easier because it'll be separate from from your yeah, stuff. and yeah, and then you you kind of know what you're getting into, like you know. It's it's a little bit easier to kind of different differentiate what I do versus what the podcast is doing. So, yeah. um, and then if we ever, I guess if we ever do like any live streams, like I know we eventually want to do like Among Us or something, um, we'll we'll do it there too. Like anything where it's like us two playing, uh, we'll we'll do it over there um, on on that channel. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to uh looking forward to the new year, man. I got a, I got a new microphone, yeah. which we'll we'll talk about here in a second, and uh, a I'm new excited. Desk. A new desk. Yeah, I'm not on the floor mm-hmm. anymore. It's great. I'm in a new location now too. I mean, yeah, you're you're just... officially uh officially moved. I saw the pictures you sent. You got everything started getting everything kind of set yeah. up. Yeah, we got so we got everything set up. So how's your week, man? We we Christmas came and went as it usually does so fast. Yep. And uh, I mean, it was good seeing all the family and stuff like that. But how how was your week? Week was good. It was it was nice just to be at home and just relax you know I, I only worked a few days last week and then and then took some time off and then i have all this week off as well yeah so it, it, it was just just nice to finish up tuesday and know that i didn't have to to be at work until the new year exactly so been chilling out um you know do, did a lot of shopping did a lot of christmas shopping of course just, of course yeah yeah it's crazy i mean the the day or two before christmas you go to any shopping center and it's like it's like a madhouse yeah i, I went to to walmart the day before yeah christmas eve i bet it was crazy it wasn't yeah it was a little crazy and, and it's funny because I, I was just getting a few things and um I, I was checking on some some stuff uh specifically like an echo dot one of the newer ones and I forgot that Walmart doesn't sell any like Amazon branded um, product. So I ended up getting, I ended up getting what I needed. um, And I went to the front and it was just packed full of people. So I was like, well, let me go back to electronics because you can, you can pay there. And um, I I was in line. I was like the third person in line and it was going pretty quick. And then I got up to the counter and I had, I mean, I maybe had 15 things. I had some, some grocery stuff for, for our, christmas eve dinner and then a couple of like gifts and uh the lady was like can i help you and i was like can i can i check out here and she's like yeah and you could tell she was just like kind of peeved or whatever yeah and then like i started putting my stuff up and she was like well i can't take anything that needs to be weighed and i looked down and i was like well i don't have anything that needs to be weighed so we're we're good <laughs> and she's like yeah she's like we just we normally don't take um you know grocery products because this is electronics and we just don't have a lot of room back here and i was like well i know that but 
I don't know if you've been up front here recently. It's kind of crazy. And she's like, everyone does that. And I said, well, there's two people behind me. So no, not everyone is doing it. So you can, I was like, you can just calm down a little bit, man. You're getting oh a little God. bit spicy with me. <laughs> so um, get to a fight in the, in the electronic <laughs> section of Walmart. Yeah. That's why I was like, I'm just, you know, I'm just coming back here just, just to cash out or whatever. And I'm no trouble. I swear. I swear. I'm no trouble. <laughs> just a um, good boy. I'm just a good little boy, but <laughs> But yeah, that was that was interesting, and I always just like going out like to places like the day, the day or like the week of Christmas, just because it's so crazy. I just like seeing people run around with chickens with their head cut off, cut off, trying to trying to find their gifts. Oh yeah, whatever. I mean, and I, I have a bad habit of doing that too. Where like, well, like the end of November with Black Friday, we'll get a ton of stuff, and then like two weeks before Christmas, we're like we're scrambling, even though we got stuff. It's just like, oh no, we gotta figure it out, but. We ended up making it happen. This person or this person. Yeah, or you just like look at your stuff and you're like, I need more. It happens every year. Like I put everything out in front of the tree, and then I'm like, I need more stuff for the kids, you know. (laughs) So um, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was a good week. It was good having the whole week off. Uh, First day, first day back at work today, Um, and it was it was pretty good. It wasn't wasn't too busy, so that, that was good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and then I came to Charlotte on Saturday, and kind of finished moving in. Moving in, we moved two dressers upstairs, or I guess two flights of stairs. And man, God, so Alicia's Alicia's dresser is like made of real wood, and it's it's pretty oh long. My God. So it's like yeah, 150, 200 pounds, and and it was just the two of us there. So we her her parents have a hand truck so we like put it on the hand truck and then i had to like hoist it up the stairs one stair at a time <laughs> i think like I, I pulled something in my back or, <laughs> or something but like i've been i've been checking my fitbit like every day and i think i've i've walked like 30 flights of stairs or 35 oh flights God. of stairs a day just like bringing boxes up every day just like there's always one more thing that we need to do yep so it's been it's been crazy but it's paid off like we love the 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 loft area upstairs, and yeah, really happy with it. Sweet. And then I'm yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in Alicia's old bedroom down here. This is my permanent podcasting and, and music setup. It's nice. Like my own desk down here. So I don't. Dude, yeah, like, you guys have like a whole nice setup. I've way more room than you had in your apartment. Oh, I had like just a little <laughs> folding <laughs> table that only held my laptop and maybe my um my little converter thing but hell yeah yeah well it's like i'm so excited like I- i've had a desk before like the-, the one behind me or whatever and it was it was cool at the time but it's just not a ton of room on it um yeah. and this one's like pretty pretty solid and it was pretty easy to put together which which was always nice it's got like nice. a little okay it's got like a little cubby on the left side and it's got like a little permanent um like microphone or headset rack or whatever cool. so yeah super super solid i mean it was like I mean, I got it for as a Christmas present, but it was like an eight dollar desk. Like, it's it's pretty nice. Is it um, like a specific like? Is it a, a gaming desk? I think it was labeled as one. I don't because okay. I, I always try to defer away from like using terms like gamer because as soon as you throw in that term to Amazon, like the prices are going to be skyrocketed just for no reason, yeah. just because whatever. Um, so it's the same thing for like wedding, like what when whenever you guys you know when you when you have your wedding anytime you t- type in wedding anything like the prices are like tripled for no reason just other than the fact that it says wedding in the title just because so, they can just because yeah. they can and people buy it so it's whatever um but yeah just it's nice just to have a nice setup um i've got like my my amazon echo going now my dot or whatever uh, which we, we've had for years but uh, i finally put it up and yeah. it was cool because i got i got my pop filter delivered today and like i got a little notification like through the through the dot it was like it was like a little ding or whatever so i was like oh Oh, that's cool i didn't know i did that i didn't know it either until like i heard the ding and i looked at my phone and it was like your package is delivered i was like okay sweet (laughs) so that's been that's been cool cool. it's all the technology is just coming together so it's all integrated yeah i'm I'm, one way one day i'll have i'll have a smart home and i won't have to to walk at all i could just yeah just zoom everywhere room to room just yeah we just make- we get like five hoverboards and then just go anywhere so yeah speaking speaking of transporting i you know santa brought me a little uh little oculus quest 2 for for christmas 
yes, let's talk about this thing because I, I had a chance to play for about I don't know, 20, 30 minutes maybe, if that. Yeah. Um, it, and, what I played, I, I loved it. So go and go ahead and jump played, on into that. You played Beat Saber and um, Super Hot, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, man, like, I, I like I've played a little bit of your PSVR, mm-hmm. um, and I think I think we only tried that Batman game. I think that's the only thing I played. I don't think I tried Resident Evil. Rush of Blood, you probably tried because I Resident Evil. Oh yeah, the time. Yeah, I did try Rush of Blood. You might have gotten um a little motion sick from that one. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, because that one's that one's kind of kind of wild. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about Beat Saber first. That game. It's also so for those those who don't know, and and it's a pretty pretty popular game by now. But it's a rhythm game where you have two different colored lightsabers and you're physically swinging them at these blocks that are coming towards you. And those blocks are colored and they also have direction input. So you'll either swing up or left, right, diagonal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's about as as simple as it gets, but you know, you can play a bunch of songs, different, different difficulties. I know there's a 360 degree mode that I want to try where you can like, you can see them coming from like all around you, I guess. And you can, Wow. take them on from any angle and i'm i'm going through the campaign right now and i was like what kind of campaign can you do with a <laughs> with like rhythm game yeah and it's pretty interesting because like some of the some of the challenges are like okay you can you, you can only miss this many blocks but then some of them are like you have to miss this many blocks or you have to miss a minimum of this many it's so, like you have to miss like six cuts mm during the song and you have to like strategically do it and then one's like you have to get a minimum combo of 26 but a max combo of 30 so after you hit that 26 combo you have to intentionally miss wow and then you have to keep going and get 20 above 26 again and there's Hmm. just a bunch of like random stuff like that and then probably my favorite one is one that requires you to move a certain number of meters in total during a song so you like every movement you do you have to like really like go for it and and do it like as, as big of a movement as possible that's awesome and then and then there's another one like a minimum or a maximum movement amount so there's a min and a max so like one of me have to like be very slight with your movements and the other one you have to like go all out wow okay that's pretty yeah. interesting so it's, yeah it's crazy i kind of want to get some of the music packs there's yeah like, i mean there's from, a from the disco one that i want to get oh nice Lincoln like Park. there's there the the shortest the short amount of time i played it it definitely gave me like that that feeling i got when i first played guitar hero and rock band and stuff for the first time um because like i mean once you went and it's super simple to like it's super easy to pick up like it's it's way easier than like guitar hero or rock band ever was um it's, yeah really intuitive so i mean you just you pick it up and you just kind of start swinging away and it's like once you start to get the rhythm and those beats start dropping, like yeah. it's so much fun, man. I had a blast. Yeah, like I had a blast and I was just like, I mean, it's funny that we did the same exact thing. It's like, we did like the easier normal, whatever. And then we jumped to like the expert <laughs> expert plus mode. And it was just like, no. And then I dropped yeah, it back to hard. And, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And I, I definitely would like to play that again. Yeah. That's, that's probably one of my favorites so far. And then, and then you played super hot as well. Yeah. Super hot was awesome. Yes. Like it was very like, it, it almost, I mean, obviously there's no, you're not feeling any pain or anything, but it's like when you get shot or something like, especially when it comes like right at your head. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a pretty, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, pretty it's realistic, pretty, I guess. And it's, and it's um, combat. Yeah. And, and, then, and then the fact that like, you can watch it on your phone or whatever. So like someone can yeah, still, yeah. you can still like be a part of it. Like you're not just in a room by yourself or in a room with somebody and they're just watching you look like an idiot. <laughs> they can actually see what you're doing, which is, I think it was really, really smart. Right. So, and then I guess you could somehow get that over to the big screen or big TV or something. Um, yeah. If you wanted I to like a cable where I could plug my phone in. Okay. TV, so. so yeah, even better. So if you have like a part, like a little party or something, you can, you know, pass around and watch everybody play Beat Saber or whatever. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, so I've played I've played Super Hot on the Xbox. I actually I think I played it last year. Okay, but like now that I've played it, like and I finished it in VR, and now that I've played it, I'm like I can't imagine playing this game on anything else. 
Yeah. It's just like, it, it feels so cool. Yeah. Like you're literally sure. like doing like a matrix dodge to dodge bullets and, and catching, catching guns and then like turning around and, and shooting people. And, you know, you can, you can block bullets with, with metal objects or, or glass mm-hmm. objects. And it, it, they just kind of thought of everything. And then there's a lot of like challenge modes and endless modes that you can play. So I've been doing a lot of those. Yeah. So super hots, man, that game. Whew, so good. Yeah. But I, I did get a few more games that I want to talk about. Sweet. Um, the Climb was one of them. Okay. And I, I, that was the first one I got, actually. And I played a little bit more of that one today. And it's really cool. Like, it, it's kind of like a, I don't want to say a one-trick pony. But, I mean, all you're doing is climbing a mountain. Yeah. And there's, like, different, <clears throat> different di- difficulties and different challenges that come with it. But mm-hmm. that one, I'm I'm not, like, super super high on yet maybe that'll change once i get a little deeper into it and and level up some but is there like a story mode and stuff or is it just like different scenarios different like levels i guess different environments really okay yeah so it's like yeah yeah i could i I didn't play that one but i can definitely see what you're talking about um because something like beat saber i just I mean, that's something that you break out whenever you have friends over or just something. Mm-hmm. If you want like a little quick workout or something, just play that. Like, yeah, it's just so much fun. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I would whip out the climb to like show off VR. Like I'd probably whip out Beat Saber and, and Super Hot. Yeah. That would be the first I thing. Guess. And they're like, what else you got? And they'd be like, oh, well, I got this game called The Climb and it's pretty cool. But yeah, yeah something to like demonstrate VR. Yeah. I would definitely do like Beat Saber first because that, God, I can't. It's, I, it's so fun. Kay- Kaylee really wants to buy one an Oculus Quest. Yeah, yeah. She was when she was playing the climb. She was pretty excited. Yeah, she really liked that one. Um, I have, I got two more games. So one of them is uh, Eleven Table Tennis. And okay, it's, 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 it sounds pretty fun. Tennis. It's about as realistic as it can get. Like <laughs> to the point where Alicia was playing earlier, and she, I think she was like either she was like trying to pick up a ball from the table or put a paddle on the table and she like physically tried to put something on the table <laughs> it was like oh, oh shit, wow there's nothing there <laughs> but it feels like it feels just like ping pong like you can put you wow know, the same spin you put on the ball like depending on how you hit it and then you just like physically toss it up and, and throw it and you can play i played online against someone oh wow okay i think it was a kid because you it destroyed like it it be yeah yeah and, and it sounded like a kid they were like can you can you hear me I didn't have oh, my wow. audio turned on, but it just shows like a like a little cat head. And then you can see their controllers. So we were like, you know, doing some dance moves. That's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. And it worked like a lot better than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good one. And then and then the last one I got, you're gonna like this one. The Walking Walking Dead. Dead. Nice. There's... How is it? It's it's rad, man. It's <laughs> so cool and like I think beforehand Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil Seven was like the staple of VR, yeah. like from from my from my perspective, from why I played. This almost blows it out of the water in terms of what you can do and, with the world. Yeah, yeah, like it's just it, like Resident Evil wasn't built around VR, right? They just yeah. implemented in. Like this game was like completely built around VR, like like something as simple as like reloading a gun. You have to physically remove the clip get a clip, put it back in and, and cock oh, the gun. Man. And like, so you'll have two weapons at your side. So you like physically reach down to grab those. You have a weapon behind your back. So you have to reach behind and grab that. Wow. And like weapons have weight to them. So like if you have a an ax, you can't just use one hand because it, it's too heavy. You have to use two hands and yeah. like physically like, like really come down on a zombie. How how is the walking in this game? Is it like kind of that warp walking? No, it's it's full it's full walking. You can you can customize it to however you like. But okay, so you just you use like a joystick thumb? Forwards. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, and it's it's like I wouldn't recommend that to someone who just started with VR because like I had played like since I had played Resident Evil, I was kind of accustomed to like moving and looking around and yeah you know all that at the same time but like i can see like someone getting pretty motion sick but there's a lot of options where you can kind of turn down those effects and you can you can turn incrementally 
when you when you played game. Resident Evil, did you did you sit down the most the most of the time playing? For Resident Evil, I did. I sat down most okay. of the time. Actually, it was probably half the time. Okay, but, but this this this, one, this sounds like you have to be actually like kind of active. You can sit, but it, it would be a little awkward. Like and yeah. I, I sat last night and played, but it's it's a little weird because you'll you'll be like touching the couch when you grab your your gun from your side or your knife. Oh, okay. So it's easier, and you can like physically crouch down in a game. I guess something like that you would. Ground. I feel like you want to be standing just to be more immersed into the world, and yeah. something like that. I just don't know. I mean, it, with VR in general, I mean, how long can you kind of sustain playing? Does it bother you at some point? Do you get like a headache or, or anything? I I probably played for an hour and a half, an hour or an hour and a half straight last night, and the VR set was kind of getting heavy. Yeah, on my head. And did then, you feel? Did you feel like weird when you took it off? And like you're like, oh, this, this crappy, dark, dingy world. <laughs> <laughs> I have like kind of had moments where, like, not right after I take it off, but a little bit after I take the headset off, I kind of get yeah. the feeling that I'm still in a VR world. You broke the simulation. <laughs> I broke the simulation. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's it's really weird. But yeah, when I when I first put it on, like I got like that not woozy feeling, but like just like a weird sensation. Your, your body's just like adjusting to Yeah. The kind of not, world in a, in yeah. a way. So yeah. and then one of the gosh, one of the coolest things about this game is if a zombie's coming at you or if you're walking up to a zombie, you can like well, for one, you can like pull out like a screwdriver or like a knife and you can flip it so you can either have it like at a, at a stabbing or like a whatever. You can, you yeah. can flip the way it, it. Okay. If you have it in your hand, but you can physically grab a zombie by the head and hold them and then just like kind of go into them with the screwdriver. Oh my God. So like it's like pretty, it's like chin. pretty like bloody then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty, the graphics aren't great. Um, I can't yeah. remember if it's better or worse than Resident Evil. But Pro- probably worse. But, but it, it sounds really, like there's more, more of an open environment, right, than Resident Evil ever was. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's yeah, a bit of a more open environment, and then there's a lot of crafting in the game. You can I made um, what's the, what's Negan's bat called? Oh, Lucille. Yeah, I made I made Lucille and use that. It was so cool who, who do you who do you play as? Is it like a new character like within the universe, or is it? Yeah, it's a new character. Okay. And you're in New Orleans. Okay, so nothing to do with the actual Okay. No, that's cool. That, that's good. Kind of craft stuff. Like I, I crafted the sheriff, which is a revolver. Yeah. It's kind of a you know, a, a play on um on Rick's gun. Yeah. But you don't you don't really see any original or see any existing characters from The Walking Dead from from what I know. And I'm only like right. two hours in, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's good. It's always good to get away from some of that stuff, just because, like, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I haven't watched Walking Dead in a long time, but I mean, I also haven't watched either spinoff show, so mm-hmm. I'm just, I don't know, kind of got over it or bored of it, I guess. But that's always yeah. good that they can get away from like that that universe and kind of do something different. Yeah, it's cool, and it gives you it gives you player choice too. There's sweet. I've only had a few scenarios, but one of them I actually kind of felt bad that I I had just gotten to this new area and I turned a corner and this guy he was trying to like I guess he was trying to get my money and he had a gun pointed at me. For money? What's he gonna do with money? I don't know. He, he, was, just trying to, he was just trying to rob me and steal my okay. stuff. <laughs> so I shot him, and and then I saw that his weapon was a a, a toy weapon. It was like a plastic weapon. Oh. So it was like, oh, I could have like potentially be- befriended that guy, but I just straight up killed him. So we'll see what happens. But probably nothing. <laughs> probably nothing. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So I, that game's really fun. Really, really fun. Sweet. So is there like on the Oculus? Because I, I really, I'm not super super familiar with VR really in general. Are there like a lot of mainline games on this thing? What do you mean, like story games, story just- driven games? triple a games that you would kind of come to expect to come to not really just a lot of like kind of one-off like specifically made for this machine kind of thing yeah okay i think i think so i haven't haven't um, really seen any is that star wars um squadron game on there 
No, it's not. It's not. Oh, I've seen. Man, that have been, that have been pretty cool to play too. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. they bring on like like Half Life Alex or something at some like yeah. at some point. I don't know if we can run it. You might have to. I think. Well, if if I were to like plug the quest up to my computer, I think I could play it from there. Yeah. But I would just need a computer that I could play something like that. The quest. Yeah. Okay. So I could like like if I wanted to, I would just have to get a better computer. But I could still yeah. use that that vr set to play which is cool. okay that's cool. well that, i mean i mean like, we talked about that before but that's just kind of the coolest thing about the quest is that it's just completely wireless and you don't have yeah. to and, and for them like i don't know most mainline stuff you're going to want to play on your on your series x or ps5 so like mm-hmm. I, I you know stuff like stuff like that so it's cool that you have like these other options to play yeah this is so. just just icing on the cake at this point yeah exactly it's cool <laughs> no it's it's really fun like i've 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 been playing it pretty much every chance I get. It's, yeah, no, it sounds it sounds awesome. Bad. So, sound it sounds cool. And and most of the games are what like between forty and ten bucks, something like that. Yeah, the most expensive was um, Walking Dead, which makes sense because that's like a sixteen hour game. And then yeah, you know, cheapest one I got was uh, Super Hot, and that's like eighteen bucks. Was the Walking was that a, was that a sixty dollar game? No, Walking Dead was forty. Forty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sweet, yeah. yeah. I definitely would like to get my hands up one at some point. You definitely uh, persuaded me on getting one. Not that you were cool. trying to persuade me, but they're they're cool. There is one game that we could potentially play, and I don't know how this would work, but we could play it over streaming. Okay, it's called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. You oh yeah, that. yeah, I've heard of that game. Yeah, but like so, I I see the 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 bomb that I'm diffusing. Yeah, and then you would look at a manual and and try to help me diffuse the bomb. I think it's it's on a lot of different stuff. Yeah, um, I think it's on like yeah phones and yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 would definitely be some some fun to play. Mm-hmm. All right, any final thoughts before we jump into uh the, the the big the big list the big game of the year stuff? Let's just jump right in. All right, cool. So yeah, you yeah. let's let's start with um I guess stuff we've been playing from previous years and just kind of briefly kind of shout that stuff out. Okay. Um, you want me to go first? You want to go first? Yeah, you can. You can go first. Okay. So, um, uh, I'll start. Ring Fit Adventure was was one of those things. I think I think you had gotten it for me for Christmas last year, mm-hmm. but I never actually played it until until this year. Um, and that's and I've recently gotten back into it. And uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a legitimate source of exercise. I mean, you you wouldn't think it was at first, just holding the thing, but once you start going and unlocking all the different um just uh, exercises i mean there's you you get you start building up a sweat after a yeah, while like it, it definitely works it's crazy I, I think the the running in place thing is it doesn't really do much for me um may, maybe and again it could be just because of the joy con drift but just like when they want you to like raise your legs up to go through water or like go up a the staircase the or something knees high knees like it, it doesn't really register half the time um same same thing for doing the squats so i, I think yeah. that's definitely more of just my issues with the joy con itself than anything um but yeah i mean that game it's such a good game it's man. such a good game man it, it's the best it's the best version of like a exercise thing that i mean because nintendo has been trying to do this for forever with we fit and all that stuff and they just haven't really ever nailed it but with this i mean they, they did it's it's fantastic yeah and, and it's, it's got like it's, a bunch of different modes you can do. Like you don't just yeah. do a story mode. You can do the the music mode, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a, a rhythm game, and then just like regular exercises, like sets of whatever. Yeah, I mean, I would usually do like two or three story stuff, and then just jump into like to end it with like a set of aerobics or core stuff or or whatever, you know. And that's the way I would kind of end it in in the the exercise. But yeah, a lot of fun. Um, you want you want to jump into one. Yeah, I'll do what one. You, what you got? And and just to clarify, this is these are games that came out um, in previous years that we played for the first time. So these yeah, aren't going to be included yeah. in our top ten, unfortunately. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of mine is Gears Five. Oh, oh my yes. god! I wish yes. I wish I would have played this last year because it might have been my my game of the year last year. Yeah, I think it was my top second last year. I think Sekiro was my first. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Gears Five. What a game! Incredible, incredible story. I want to play. They they just added a new 
story campaign to the game that we need to play. Okay. Okay. Um, it's 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 based off of the um, oh what, what's I can't remember the 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 mode in the game. It's like the kind of the suicidal mission, whatever, where you have to like plant a bomb in the nest and then you have to escape. Mm-hmm. Um, high busters called? is that what it's called high busters yep so th- those characters like have their own campaign now so that's cool um yeah, which i think this that. might be the first time gears has had some sort of campaign i think i'm pretty sure so that's, like a that's campaign cool. like add-on DLC. yeah like an add like add-on that wasn't like multiplayer stuff um and it's free it's it's included with game pass so that's, oh, yeah. that's even better uh any any other thoughts on gears no it was just just an incredible story and you know very touching at the end and you know w- without spoilers it was, it was a very hard decision to make at the end of the game and I, i'm very excited to see how that carries over to the next one yeah i wonder what's going to be canon um yeah i don't know no idea <laughs> um next up i would luigi's mansion 3 fantastic like it, the game's so much better in co-op i think uh, just playing, just playing that with with my wife Brittany has been so much fun. We we still haven't beaten it yet, but we we still need to. Um, but we're very close. <laughs> we're just like super slowly doing it. Um, what, what floor are you on now? Like fourteen or thirteen? I think there's fifteen floors okay. total, so, including so you've gone two. Past the point where the cat steals those keys and brings back the yes. toys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we got past that part. Okay. Um, yeah, super fun game. I mean, it's it's Luigi's Mansion, um, and it kind of you know it kind of mixes one and two together uh which is which is nice um yeah kind of yeah. that, that, that bite size like kind of chunk like hey let's you know do an hour on the floor and then be done that that kind of thing but it doesn't kick you out like no 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 like, um, the second one does which is good yeah yeah not like not like dark moon um what, what's your what's your next mention you're gonna love this one slay the spire is is my is my next one i forgot Man. you played that oh my gosh god i still you play played so time. much i played it so much that game is i did not expect to like it as much as i did because i'm normally not a big like card game person yeah but it's so much different right than a typical yeah it's it's almost just like a turn-based turn-based game or turn yeah turn-based rpg or whatever and you know normally i'm not a, not a fan of roguelikes either but between this and, and dead cells just got you and and hades this year yeah i mean i yeah, kind of been on a uh, a roguelike kick. Nice, for whatever reason. But well, yes, you went on a roguelike, cl- a roguelike uh, quest, and I went on a uh, kind of a Metroidvania kind of thing yeah. this year. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, Hollow Knight, what, probably one of my favorite games of all time. Like it's, wow, it's freaking difficult at some points and mm-hmm. frustrating as hell and you just want to put it down i mean there's probably one boss, boss that i died 50 or 60 times on and i was like starting to yell and then like i looked it up and there was like i just needed to equip this one rune and i and i beat it on my second try i think yeah so man but what a game man just it it, it brings in like the metroidvania stuff that i love it's it's pretty heavily dark sp- dark souls inspired with the bosses and just like kind of coming up on random bosses that aren't um necessarily part of the story yeah and uh just the world man it's just it's so cool it's just such, such a, a cool well-built world. world just it works so well yep and then just all the unlocks you get all the fast travels you unlock the the eventual ability you get where you can save somewhere and then go then you can go kind of travel off and then you can work back to that spot that's not necessarily like a save point that mm-hmm. changed the game for me too like it was just a lot of different little things that eventually added up to just be so amazing yeah um, it just clicks and and i wasn't even happy or i wasn't even mad that the final boss wasn't even really that hard it was just kind of like a, like a breath of fresh air like i was like oh thank god because you looked really hard <laughs> yeah yeah it looks it looks really hard but but I still yeah, I like it's... i'll probably go back at some point and kind of finish up the map or whatever and, and maybe mm-hmm. um we'll see but um it's a big map yeah it's it's huge i mean i've i've, I've locked a lot of it too and I, and I don't know if i unlocked some dlc stuff um because i played it on the switch which was perfect like just playing that in handheld mode right. while i watched tv or watched a movie or something was awesome yeah that, i think that's the best way to play it like i don't know if i would have played it as much as i did if i didn't have it on the switch 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my next one is The Witcher 3. Yes. Yeah, that was that was early. That was the first game I, I beat this year. Yeah, because um, you, you started playing it and then I started playing it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually got this for Christmas. Fun. The Witcher book. The first oh, one. Nice. Yeah. So That's I'm excited. Great. I'm excited to read that. Yeah. Yeah, Witcher's great game. The yeah. the, the side stories are amazing and some of the best i've ever seen in like a game for side quests and just just side quests it's crazy yeah and i got around to playing hearts of stone which is the first dlc yep and that was a that was a pretty good story i haven't played blood and wine yet but i still want to go back at some point i might yeah i might transfer my save over to the xbox and play it there if i can i don't i think i can do that since i have it on both I might Wait, have to, like read because I, I played on the Switch. Oh right, right. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to transfer my save and just see how it looks on the Series X. Yeah. I, I need to fire it up and look there. at it. Yeah. Oh, I still think I still think Bloody Baron is one of the best quests. Oh, it's yeah, oh my time. god. <laughs> and it's it's so long. Like I forgot how long it was until the yeah. second time I played it. Yeah, just all the stuff with the with the bog witches and uh, it's just me- a very messed up very messed up storyline um yeah yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a really really long one like yeah probably like eight hours <laughs> yeah it's super long it's Wild. it's one of the best though it's it's incredible mm-hmm. incredible um anything else you got yeah um i've got ori in the blind forest um nice. which which i did not play until this year i played it i wanted to play it so i can get to will the wisps and i think I'll, i'm better for it because i just playing those back to back was just so much fun and even going to will of the wisps i did not get like any sort of fatigue at all like it was very nice just immediately seeing those those differences um man ori again just <laughs> incredible metroidvania esque style game um it's charming like the world is so beautiful all the all the unlocks are just so much fun getting the double jump and yeah stuff like that um and and then will the wisp i think just improves on it in every single way um other than obviously the the major uh frame rate issues that had at launch but has since been um yeah since been fixed and uh yeah ori man it's it's so good can't wait for a third one hope they do some dlc for the second one probably not at this point but yeah i'll play any sort of ori game it's incredible incredible it really is um do you have anything else that was on my list as well but okay. i do have one more and that's for the horizon four um okay didn't get around to playing this one until the series x came out and i just want i really just want something that was like a graphical showcase yeah but i ended up playing a ton of this game and you know i'm not a big racing sim fan fan but but yeah this one's just fun man it's just fun just driving it's just fun driving around you know crashing doing some drifts yeah doing some races yeah racing games are and it's great that it's on game pass too because i just could never i could never see myself buying a racing game but if it's mm-hmm. there like i'll i'll, I'll check it out yeah 100 um, but yeah I, I can't remember if we discussed where this game fell but i put it on my previous year's game and it was jedi fallen order <laughs> oh okay uh <laughs> <laughs> I put that on my current year list. <laughs> I thought we said December was a cutoff. Maybe. Hmm. I might uh, just I'm have nine th- games then. You don't have a tenth game? Well, that was my tenth game. Y- you don't have another game? Oh yeah, I got. I can do another game. All right. I mean, we, we can. We can, on... we can do it. We can just do it this time. I'll have to adjust my list though. Do you have anything that's like bottom tier on your list that you just added on? Because. You didn't have yeah, but I'd also have to put Jedi up a, like pretty close to the top of my list for game of the year. <laughs> okay, let, let's leave it off because I don't want to. I mean, I, I could. No, no, I have another game I can buy. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, we're good. We're good. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Jedi File and Order. 
Wow. I mean, just Jesus. Yeah, that game is so just freaking good. It's it's funny that that was like the first game I beat on the Series X. Um, but man, what a just fantastic Star Wars story, a fantastic Dark Souls like game. Um, wow, it's just kind of insane. Uh, the, the only thing and the only thing that I kind of wish it had, which makes sense for the universe, was like I kind of wish like your upgrades for your lightsaber affected you know like it had attributes like it had damage like increased damage and stuff like that that's the only thing i thought was missing but it, it makes sense within that world so i can't really complain too much about that yeah i think they as a part of their deal with disney or whatever they couldn't they couldn't customize the lightsaber in that regard yeah i mean it makes total sense like it's a very a very minor very minor gripe um yeah. within that game um but other than that i mean the the i thought the the just like the gameplay was fun um just unlocking all the different like like lightsaber pieces and bd pieces just fun it was just fun like searching for all that stuff none of it really mattered at the end of the day because it doesn't do anything but it was still cool just to like go to all these little secret areas and stuff yeah yeah that's my one gripe is like searching for you know an, an optional item or whatever it's, it's just going to be like a skin yeah Never yeah they can add to your <laughs> which i mean it, it you get you get like experience points too so it doesn't uh, it doesn't necessarily doesn't mean anything but as far as like yeah like increasing your power or increasing your weapon damage it doesn't it doesn't do anything but yeah but yeah but what a game man like as yeah, a as game. a person that doesn't care about star wars at all until recently here with with the mandalorian and now this um yeah, I'm kind of into Star Wars all of a sudden, and uh, I'm I'm not mad about it. So um, into the yeah. side stories of of yeah, yeah. So yeah, what what a game, man! Just what a game! Like the whole thing is just so much fun. I had a blast. Yeah, I I loved it all the way through. Yeah, it's so weird that it was the first game that we both finished on the Series X. Yeah, it was just it was fun. I just I played like two hours of it, and I was like, I'm really into this. And then because I had got an assassin's creed or we got it or whatever mm -hmm. and uh I, I wasn't super into assassin's creed at first so i was like i'll just play this and then i did and uh yeah great game great game all right you ready to uh jump into our top 10 list here yes yeah i'm ready sorry i've been kind of rearranging my list okay or, or numbering <laughs> them. I, I hadn't numbered them oh okay I was doing that. gotcha but uh, yeah i'm ready all right uh, you want you want to start? Well, I guess we'll just go with our like our top ten. Like we'll start at number ten and just make our way down, right? Let's, yeah, let's do it that way. Cool. All right. So I will. I'll. I guess I'll go first. Uh, at number ten, Super Mario 3D All Stars. Um, and, and again, maybe it would have been a little bit higher on my list, but I haven't played. I played. I completely finished, um, 64, which was like just mm -hmm. a huge accomplishment in my life just because like that was like the one game from my childhood that I never beat or could beat because it was just too hard for like a six-year-old to do so yeah yeah super happy I went out went back and just beat it for the first time um and then jumping into sunshine next and realizing that that game was not as good as I thought it was remember oh, it being good, man. um it's the truth <laughs> it, it is the truth I, I played like an hour of galaxy with uh with Kellen um, and then at that point, I was just kind of like Mario out because we were playing 3D World and, and Odyssey, and we just played so much Mario that I was like, I'm ready to take a break. Um, so maybe, maybe if I had played some more Galaxy, it would be a little bit higher up on my list. Um, but yeah, it made the top 10 list, so I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy about that too, because it's <laughs> on my list as well. <laughs> uh, but at my number 10 is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Okay. Now, this game I haven't finished yet, so yep, take whatever I say with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty deep into it, like 15 hours in, and it's been like, it's been a fun game, like, not my Ooh, favorite I guess game of the year. I get, I'm going to stop you real quick. After you finish your, your 10, we'll, we'll do our honorable mentions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, 
yeah, not my not my favorite game of the year, and the frame rate kind of sucks, and it's it's kind of in desperate need of an upgraded Switch. Yeah, I think but, so. But it's it's really fun. It's it's fun just you know mindlessly hacking and slashing at yeah. hundreds of enemies at a time. It's it's a lot of fun. Characters. It is fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. And I was kind of debating it, putting debating putting it on my list, but I think it deserves a spot in the top ten. I think okay. It's, yeah, I think it's good enough. Okay. All right, let's do our honorable mentions. All right, so yeah, we'll backtrack to honorable mentions. Um, I threw up. I didn't play it a ton, but for what I played, I really, really enjoyed it, which was Clubhouse Games. Um, oh, shoot. I love Clubhouse <laughs> Games. Um, yeah, <laughs> just playing playing Yahtzee in that and playing all, like, all the different mini games. A lot of fun. Like, just a, a great family game to play. Um, really, really cool for, for when I played um i'm throwing up uh mario kart live home circuit as an honorable mention um fun fun game Uh, is it gimmicky maybe a little bit um Mm -hmm. i think it's definitely more towards like kids like kellen's age or or something like that um and and maybe if i just had a bigger place that was hardwood downstairs other than carpet. Cause it works surprisingly well in carpet. It's a little shaky. Um, but, but yeah, and it really doesn't, I thought like the dog hair would destroy it, but it, it's really held up like really nicely. Um, so I'm very happy about that. Um, there's just not a lot of depth to it. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's, a, it's an investment. It's a hundred bucks. You have to have a separate switch. Um, and then if you want two players, you have to have another hundred dollar machine or your cart, and then a second switch, so it's it's a a huge investment for like a family if you if you have more than one kid, um, but at the end of the day, it's still fun. It's still kind of got like that Guitar Hero Beat Saber vibe, vibe for the first time where you play it, where it's just so cool to see something like this in action. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that that's why I wanted to give it an honorable mention. Um, mm-hmm. And then my my third game is Hyrule's Hyrule Warriors. It's it's an honorable okay, mention. Nice. It, it didn't make I was debating putting it was on my list at first and granted i haven't i haven't finished it i've only i've played far less than you have i think mm. um so but that my opinion may change at some point but for for now from what i've played um really good game like you said the frame rate is pretty atrocious at times um yeah, but it looks good. it looks yeah. pretty good it's 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 quite beautiful for for what it is um i really enjoy um well, maybe not super beautiful. I don't know. It, it looks pretty good. It's it definitely doesn't look as good as like Breath of the Wild, but no, no. But um, it it looks better than I thought it was gonna look. Um, I really liked like the overall design of like the map and how they got just like little mini stuff that you can kind of go into with, as far as like oh you got all these Lazalfos fangs or whatever, give them to this farmer and all of a sudden he's back up and running and you can you know all of a sudden start trading with him and just little stuff like that where you don't necessarily have to go into a mission. Right. If you want to kill 10 minutes, you can kill 10 minutes just doing that kind of stuff. Just instant um, gratific- gratification. Exactly. Stuff. And then, like, apart from the actual story missions, like, there's a bunch of, like, little side missions, like, you know, doing stuff with just Link with his spear or doing the training for, you know, Daruk or whoever person you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are, like, super short. They're less than five minutes. So it's, like, it's, it's a great game to, like, kind of end your night with like you just play a couple missions and then you're done and then whatever um so it's very bite-sized and that's kind of where that's kind of like why i go to the switch a lot just because a lot of stuff i play is very bite-sized you just kind of get you know your your fill of stuff and then you know put it down so great game so far but not quite top 10 material i think for for me for me for me (laughs) (laughs) all right let me do let me do my mentions so <laughs> I added Clubhouse Games because I forgot about the game, but it's, it's so good. <laughs> it and is good. I yeah, Yahtzee man, Yahtzee is unbeatable. Yeah. That game is just amazing. <laughs> yeah, and then and then even like connecting the two switches together was really cool. Doing like the racetrack and stuff, like it's it's super gimmicky. No, I'm not gimmicky, oh, yeah. but like it's super just whatever throwaway, I guess. But it's it's fun to see it in action for like a couple times, you know. Yeah, it's it's a great. I mean, the game itself it is just a great party game. In general oh yeah yeah definitely yeah. You, could, you could definitely have a rooftop party with that oh you can totally be karen <laughs> have a rooftop party with that one um next on my list is hades nice. i still haven't beaten this one 
and I've gotten like three boxes in. I think there are a couple more than that, but I mean, this is this is a roguelike, so it's one of the roguelikes I've been playing this year. I'm surprised this one didn't make your top ten. Yeah, I I kind of fell off of it when I, I I think some other games are. I think when Series X came out, I, I fell off of it a little bit, but yeah, I really do like this game, and if I had played it more, it would probably be somewhere in the top ten. But okay, unfortunately, I didn't. But, gotcha. Yeah. Um, next game is a short hike. This okay. Is, yeah, yeah. 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 This is a very short game. You know, hour and a half max, but it's just like an open world exploration game where you're just you're just collecting these golden feathers so you can jump higher, so you can climb this <laughs> mountain. And you know, it's 3D. You're kind of over the top 3D. Mm-hmm. And it's got like a, a kind of a touching story where you're trying to get to the top of the, the mountain to have cell service to call your mom. It's really a really a neat art style too. Yeah, kind of like a like a 3DS type art style. Yeah. 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 Is it, yeah, definitely definitely a cool game. Very short, but but great. Um we got two more. Uh okay. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Say okay. Wild Hearts. That's just a really, really cool rhythm game um i don't really know how to 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 describe it i would recommend anyone play it it's on sale right now in the e-shop so go check it out but it's yeah it's just a rhythm game and you're following a a girl who has a broken heart and she's recovering via rhythmic action and then last on my list is carry on and now i really i know i know oh my gosh (laughs) This one okay. I had, I, I did have this one in my top ten initially, but I, I reworked it, and there are some other games I wanted up there just a little bit more, but Carry On, uh, Carry On's amazing. Maybe I should have it in my top. Maybe it, it should have been number ten instead of Hero Warriors. I regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable mention. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you ready to jump back into the the top list? Yeah. What's your nine? Number nine is Paper Mario, the Origami King. Hey, mine too. <laughs> nice. So we'll, I, we'll talk about it together then. Um, so really, I mean, it's a Paper Mario game, so it's super charming. Like it's got definitely got funny moments with, you know, the paper jokes and stuff like that. It's it's super pretty looking. It looks it looks really, really good. Very pretty. Um, uh, the, the biggest gripe I have with it, and I know I would, was that was that battle system. It just got so tedious towards the end of that game. Like I was just, ready for that game to end by the end of by the end of it because i was just tired it went of on a fighting long i think yeah and, and a lot of a lot of paper mario games and like mario and luigi stuff like those rpgs they'd go on for like maybe three or four hours too long than yeah. they should and this this felt kind of the same way um and i didn't i didn't do i didn't collect every toad so i, don't, I wasn't exhausted at the end of the game because of that but mm-hmm. um yeah just that that battle system i just did not really like at towards the end of the game and i didn't really love it to begin with um but i you know i tolerated it because I, I really enjoyed like just you know the writing and and the, the story for what it was yeah the um, writing kind of saved saved the yeah. game for me it was definitely really really funny like yeah and then like the whole reasoning behind the the, the whole plot in the first place was something so silly so yeah. it was just kind of it was it was funny i don't want to spoil it because it's it's I mean, it's it's not like groundbreaking or anything, but it's it's fun. It's it's definitely definitely fun. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the boss fights in that game were pretty awesome too. Yeah, they were. They were. Yeah, it takes. It took me a little bit of to get used to the boss fights, mm-hmm. um, especially that first one. I think it's what was it the was it the colored pencils? Yeah, the colored pencils. That one took me a couple of tries to beat, but once once I beat them, um, I kind of got the the rhythm for the game. Right, but yeah, I mean, great, great game. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it, it was definitely a, a nice surprise this year because I don't think really anybody expected this game when they announced it. So yeah, that was a it was a cool surprise, and it came out like a couple of weeks after it was announced. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Uh, any any last words for Paper Mario? Um, I, I will say that that finding and collecting the toads was pretty fun for what it was yeah. worth. Like, I didn't do all of them, but no, there, yeah, that, that was, was that was cool. cool. And just you know, eventually, like, towards the end of the game, if you you know, use like the coins or whatever to get health back or or you give a hint or something, like, it's just funny watching all the toads dance and throw yeah. coins at you or whatever. 
so, it's cool yeah. seeing like the like kind of like reaping the re- rewards in a sense. yeah you're seeing all the toads on screen that you collected or that you found yeah, exactly exactly uh, and, there, and there were some pretty unique boss fights in that game too mm-hmm. um yeah but, unique boss fights i really liked i think there were like what five different kind of areas that you were in yeah really liked a few of them like that yeah yeah so yeah, yeah the sand the sand one i didn't love i didn't either that one kind of went on a little too long yeah too much because you had backtracking and stuff yeah um final thoughts great game great game <laughs> um uh, number eight is animal crossing new horizon do we have the same list <laughs> I this is like kind of the first Animal Crossing I really got into, um, way mm-hmm. way much more than I did New Leaf. I, I loved like the quote unquote campaign that it had, I guess. Um, and then once I beat that, I just kind of stopped. I don't know why. I know I that's too. when it that's when it opens up, and I know that's like when it you really start to play Animal Crossing. I mean, I, I, I want to go back and just see everything that I've missed. Um, but it was just it was really fun until it wasn't fun and then i just and then it was a chore and then it was a chore like i just got tired of it um yeah so yeah yeah i kind of i kind of like i beat the game and then i got well i unlocked like the ability to add paths and change your terrain everything yep so i spent like probably an additional 20 or so hours after that so you played a lot more than i did then yeah yeah um and then I got to a point where I was like really happy with my village. Yeah. And then I just kind of stopped. One it's time day. to walk it's away like, and let it let it thrive. Like, yeah, like it's not it wasn't one of those things where I like I picked it up every now and then. I just never picked it up after I stopped. I yeah, like, I just I, I don't know. I, I and, and maybe this is in the game now. I have no idea. I wish there was like a way to make bells without having to sell stuff all the time. Like mm-hmm. I other I know there's the turnip thing, but I, I wish you could like create like a market or something or a store or something that you could sell your stuff that you grow or whatever. Like a Farmville type thing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I think I would be if they mix Animal Crossing with like um Harvest Moon or something like that, where you could sell your stuff or like a Stardew Valley. Mm-hmm. Um I think I would like it a lot more, but I, I need to go back and I need to go back and check it out. But for what I played, um I really enjoyed it. Like it was yeah, yeah, fun to wake up every day and like play for like 30 minutes before work or something uh, or, or kind of th- throughout the day, you just kind of do stuff and, and s- get the spiders and you try to catch the spiders because yeah. they were like so hard to catch. And yeah, it's it a really fun game. And such a, such a cultural phenomenon too. Oh yeah. It out. Like it was kind of, it came at the perfect time, you know, right when, like the work from home started right when lockdown started yep all over so like i don't know if i would have enjoyed it as much if if we weren't in this scenario this year because like i just had so much more time to play it yeah exactly during the day it definitely gave me kind of like the vibe of like when the Wii first came out with um with Wii sports how like everybody and their mom was playing this game or like pokemon go at first like like everybody was talking about it. People that I would never expect to play Animal Crossing, streamers that I've watched, you know, they mm-hmm. they would be playing. It, like it was just everywhere, and it was really cool because like people were buying switches that I would never expect yeah. to play in the game. And then that's that's when the the switch didn't the switch light come out? No, that was November of 2019. So it was it was already yeah, out for a little bit. Then. Um, and then they released that really beautiful, like pastel colored switch version, which was really yeah. cool um i saw that in stores the other day i was like damn it nintendo (laughs) um yeah i i really enjoyed it yeah yeah i really enjoyed the time i had with it and you know maybe i'll go back into it since it's i think they're in winter now so it's gonna look completely different yeah yeah that's what i keep thinking i'm gonna do so we'll see all right, um, number seven. I know you don't have it on your list. It's uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. No, oh, nice. So, I mean, this game came out, and like, this is like the first game I played of, of this year. It came out in January. Um, I really like Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, all that stuff. I don't get into like the the manga or anything, so I'm not like super diehard into it. Um, but just that and fighters that I play a lot, like, I really enjoy Dragon Ball. Um, and, and just 
this was probably the best story version of Dragon Ball Z I've probably ever played. Um, I mean, it's like it's again they're they're all telling the same story, so it's just reliving yeah. like. But but it, you you do a lot more stuff. I mean, you have like you have fishing in the game, you have hunting where you can. And granted, you're just shooting them with your blast. It's nothing crazy, but you, there's you know getting boosts from that. There's there's doing stuff like Gohan's whenever Piccolo in the game or in the show leaves Gohan in the desert for six months by himself when he's like five, uh, you get to play as him and kind of like learn his story a little bit more and, and do stuff. And, yeah. and, and, and grand, like, and, and the fighting is a lot like, it's a lot like uh Xenoverse one and two. I don't think you've ever played those games, but for the people that have, it's, it's, it's pretty much like that. A little, it's a little bit better. Um, well, probably quite better than those, but those are, uh, those are still really good games too, I think. Um, okay. But this, this one's kind of buggy too. It's, the the open world i mean it's fun flying around and collecting like all the orbs and stuff but it's as like an open world it's kind of boring and lackluster um it just doesn't feel lived in i mean you have like ai moving throughout the city but they're not doing anything important right. they're just walking around or driving around their cars and then like the enemies like there, there's enemies just flying around that you can go across and you can avoid them if you want to so it's not like you have to fight him or whatever. It's not like a Final Fantasy where you're just going to get attacked out of nowhere. Um, you can definitely fly around them. Um, but yeah, I mean, all that stuff aside, it was so much fun going through this game. And I mean, I probably put 55 hours into this thing. Wow. Um, so I still, I still want to get the DLC and play that. Um, just, be, just because it was so fun. But yeah, yeah, all, all that negative stuff aside that you would expect from like a Dragon Ball Z game, it's still. <laughs> probably one of the best dragon ball z games out there um as one like not counting fighters just because fighters is a completely different game but as far as like one of those kind of dragon ball z games like like xenoverse it's probably the best and it's it's just a lot of fun and yeah it, it, is it technically better than animal crossing i don't know but it's i had you a had lot more fun. fun with it so I, I just think it was i had a more more invested more time into it um, I loved every aspect of playing that thing, just watching all the different characters that you love from the show come into it and playing as them and then having like your squad. And then like you had like a almost like a game board thing style, like in the menu where every time you would you would unlock, like fight a new character, you would unlock their 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 coin or whatever. And then you could place that coin into the game board Um I can't remember what it's called. It's not a game board, but and then but if you if you lined them up to ne- next to certain people, you would get like a bonus. So like, if you were to line like Krillin and Goku up, you would get like the best friend bonus or whatever whatever it's called. Or like interesting, okay. Gohan and Goku, you would have like the father son bonus or like Piccolo and Gohan because they have that relationship. Or I don't know, like if you have just there's so many different combinations of, of characters that you can kind of place against each other and you get like a different boost for it but so there's a lot of stuff in the game and it's it's a lot of fun and then they had they added a card battler to it as well like oh yeah, yeah, their, yeah and i haven't i played a little bit of it but not enough to really talk about it um but but yeah i mean it's, it's it was a game man it was a fun it was a fun <laughs> game i loved it i would definitely recommend if you're like any sort of a dragon wizzy fan i would definitely recommend it especially now it's probably 20 bucks at this point, thirty bucks. Yeah, it's probably, probably pretty cheap now. You can play it if you want to, because you, I've got it. So oh, that's right. Yeah. So it's, it's fun. Now. Yeah, it's fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Nice. All right. My number seven is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. Nice. Yeah. You really like this game. Yeah. This is one of those games where I, I played through both of them in a weekend, yeah. and did like all the challenges for every level. And then I didn't play it really anymore after that. But the the time I had spent with it was just so much fun. Like you know me, I love skateboarding games. Yeah, in general. And shoot, I forgot to add. No, I just I just remembered <laughs> Skater XL. That's oh on man, the list. But honorable okay. mention. Honorable mention. Honorable mention. Honorable mention. Yeah, it's it's not complete yet. So whatever. Um, but yeah, Tony Hawk. Like that just, and and I never really played the original no we, we didn't really get two. into it until until three until three and then we, we played some underground one and two 
Um, did you play one and two underground? You oh, played yeah. that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah, then like American one, Wasteland came out and stuff like that. American Wasteland, um, Proving Grounds. That was. A, oh yeah. That was a Downhill game. Jam. Remember that one? Downhill Jam, man. <laughs> <laughs> you you love that game. Yeah, yeah. It was it was, it was good though. Games I got with the Wii. Yeah, that was cool. But yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two, very very good remake. Like I want them so bad to either add Pro Skater Three to to that collection or release a separate remaster with three and four because i mean three is one of my favorite yeah uh, three was yeah. really good three was really good i don't remember much about four but i would just love to see both of those yeah kind of remastered in the same way yeah i played play down perfectly I, I played a couple of levels of tony hawk and i need to go back and play it um but from what i played i, I really enjoyed it uh and it was funny because I was just listening. I don't know if you're listening to this podcast. It's called the Video Game Apocalypse. Um, it's from the Laser Time Network, but um, they, they were they were actually the people from Games Radar back in the day that did like the bit with like Halo Reach will win Game of the Year. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's those same guys, but they they left that that uh, company and formed their yeah. own. Um, but. They, he was telling me, or not telling me, but he was he was saying uh, technically that in technically in my ears, yeah, um, that in the original game you have like the mall level. I think it's either one or two. I can't remember, um, but it's like a kind of a vibrant mall. Like it's there's people in there. There's st- there's yeah. stores, but in the second, in like the remaster, it kind of reflects like today's size, yeah. so, you know, current society because obviously before COVID malls were kind of dying anyways and 2020 has just kind of not quite been the nail on the coffin for the for malls but it definitely didn't help so it was just kind of funny they reflected that into the new the new era so yeah you can you can tell they put a lot of heart into yeah. the game and they for just sure. they, they nailed the feeling like I, I didn't play five but i heard whoever worked on five i think it was Rogue Moto, they just they did not get the feeling of the game right and yeah you know that's, that's which is a shame one part yeah so I mean they they yeah they nailed it. Um, I can't remember who did the remaster. Uh, I don't. Hopefully, I, hopefully this paves the way for a proper new Tony Hawk or like Tony Hawk re, like you know reboot or something reboot or something called Tony Hawk. You know whatever it is. Um, yeah. That that would be really cool. Yeah, I can't wait for for whenever that happens when when the skateboarding resurgence yeah exactly finally finally makes its way in yeah exactly all right what's your number six number six is resident evil three nice so i almost forgot that this game came out this year (laughs) um man i freaking i know a lot of people did not like this game uh just because it's so short and it is it's really really short Uh, Mm -hmm. i think my first playthrough i beat it like under six hours so it's it's super short but i played it probably six or seven times like just between getting all the guns i think i think i completely got all the achievements in this game i'm pretty sure i did um like going back and beating it like on inferno mode or whatever it is like and unlocking like the infinite rocket launcher and stuff like it's just so much fun like it's it's a classic resident evil like, kind of what you expect oh, yeah um it kind of sucks that they and i never really i played a little bit of the original resident evil 3 on the gamecube but Again, I was just young and couldn't beat stuff it's like that. Uh, apparently, they took out like a whole section of the game, the clock tower section, which you see like on the on the map for the um for the tram or whatever. So it kind of sucks that they did that. Like, I don't really understand why. Um, and it's definitely more, way more actiony than like two was for sure. Um, it's not nearly like as scary or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I mean, it was still so much fun to go through that game and play. Um, the, the nemesis stuff kind of got i don't know it's an unstoppable beast right that you fight four times five times throughout the game so it's like kind of yeah. gets tedious towards the end but i thought the ending boss was pretty cool for what it was it's pretty pretty badass ending boss. yeah especially like yeah the gun you use at the very end too it was, it was, was like pretty stupid awesome stupid easy but yeah not on like inferno like it was because you can get hit oh, right. killed with like one hit with with his uh with with the, his claw or whatever, like, I guess, mm-hmm. um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's it's Resident Evil, like two and three were excellent, I think, remasters, three being a little bit worse. Um, and maybe because we had just gotten to like a year before, so maybe that played into a little bit of kind of why people didn't like it as much. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe that had something to do with it. But yeah, two two was amazing. Three was really great, I would say. Um, yeah, I would really, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Nice. So that was number six, right? Yeah. Okay. My number six was cross code for the okay. Nintendo Switch. Okay. Okay. Um, I know you didn't play this one, but this no, one, I didn't. This scratched the same itch, or scratched that itch of the Dragon Ball Z Game Boy Advance games. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. The Legacy of Goku one and two, and then Bo- Boost Fury. It, it kind of scratched that that same itch, except it's a like a full scale RPG where you're you know leveling Ooh, up every outside. part of your character and getting new equipment and and yeah. I still need like I'm at I'm at like the end level of the game and I need to go in and finish it. But yeah, it's just an incredible game. Like so much thought went into it, and and the story is. It's like a it's a pretty pretty good story for for what it is. Um, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it, but but the story is fantastic and it kind of keeps you going throughout the game and and like the the platforming like for for a kind of a top down game like this like the platforming is really good and yeah. it kind of drives drives a lot of the game outside of you know, the combat which is combat's great too. It's like kind of every part of the game is great. The only gripe I had with it when it first came out was it was a little slow, mm-hmm. um, a little slow on the switch, and the FPS the the frames per second would drop a little bit, depending on whatever areas you're in, and then and then yeah. getting into the menus and moving around was a little slow, but they they patched all that out. Okay, so it runs. I was gonna ask because they they've got now. it optimized for the Series X because it's on Game Pass, so I've been meaning to check it out, but. I've just been yeah, so ra- yeah. so wrapped up in Valhalla right now. <laughs> God. Yeah, um, I think you go check it out on Series X. See how yeah. see how good it looks. That's it for number six. Cool. Number okay. five for me is uh, Doom Eternal. What'd you say? Oh, Doom Eternal. Yeah, Doom Eternal. Man, um, was not hyped for this game at all. Like I, I love 2016 Doom. Like I thought it was mm-hmm. super fantastic um it, it was a great game and this one kind of came and went for me because i mean it came out the same day as animal crossing and i opted for animal crossing which not mad about because doom eternal came to to game pass so it was, it was good to uh yes, it did. good to wait and god man that game runs so good i i want to I, I, I might boot it up for the series x just to see how it is for that mm-hmm. um but man it, it ran great on the xbox one uh the base base xbox one um and it's a doom game it just like all all the the little mini battles you have throughout that game are fantastic it gets super hard at the end um mm-hmm. even the, la- the last boss fight was like uh, almost an hour long it was so long man it was yeah it was like 45 minutes to like like it was really long no there's checkpoints did but you die oh, no okay, okay. i don't think i did but yeah, just like warping across the map, whether it's like one through one of the jumping, the what, either like through the portal or one of like the jump pads, um, mm-hmm. some of the weapons you get, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but are pretty freaking badass. Um, yeah, I mean it was it's I think it does everything better than 2016 Doom was. I know a lot of people complained about the platforming, which I've talked about talked about before. I didn't really find the platform to be that difficult. And even if you died for some reason, like you you respawn instantly. So there's like no loading when it comes to dying. Um, oh. So like I don't really understand why people had such a big problem with the platform. If, if the loading was bad, then yes, for sure. Um, but but there you you it's almost like Super Meat Boy kind of loading that you would just instantly come back. It was crazy. Yeah. Um. And then and then and then finding um finding all the um the secrets and stuff throughout the levels was was really fun to do and uh yeah great great game great game all right this is one of those games that i can't wait to play on the series x i played a yes. l- like probably two or three hours on the on the base one but we were just so close to the series x that i that i wanted yeah. to wait a little bit 
Yeah, it's good. You, you definitely, I would definitely recommend playing on the Series X. Yeah, I'm sure it'll run even better. Can't wait. Uh, my number five is Resident Evil Three. So you, you kind of covered what I what I loved about the game, but kind of kind of what I loved most is that it just kicked off this like Resident Evil binge that I did, where I played yeah. through three and then and then Claire's story into played through seven again. Um, I haven't played through Resident Evil six. Like, yeah, you were, you were, yeah, I forgot that you like went hard into Resident Evil. Yeah. And then played a little bit of Resident Evil 1 on the Switch and never, never go back and play that, that one. But, but yeah, Resident Evil 3, like, I know it's not as good as 2, but just the fact that, like, I almost like the fact that it's so short because you can just play it. Yeah. In an afternoon. Like, you, you, like, by the end of the, like, a third or fourth times that, that we were both playing through it, we were, you know, being in under two hours. Yeah. Like, that's just so cool that you can play through, like, a, a game like that in, in under two hours. Yeah, it's, it's insane. about it. And not, not even, like, cheating or anything. Like, you just play the game as yeah, you unlock yeah. stuff. Yeah, just because you learn the, the shortcuts and secrets and optimal routes and everything. And, man, yeah, yeah. Resident Evil. Can't wait. Yeah, to and, and the fact that, like, it start, like, it starts off with a bang. Like you just yep. immediately get attacked by Nemesis. Like it's so cool. So, yeah, great, yeah. great game, great, Fantastic. great game. Uh, my number four is Carry On. Wow. Oh yeah, just... dude. I really, 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 really like this game so much. Um, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like I, I saw like very little kind of not really ads, but. I mean, I just saw like a quick video of it and was like, okay, this is cool. I heard, I think I probably listened to a couple of podcasts about it. Mm. Um, yeah. And then like instantly when I picked it up and just played as a monster, it was, I was instantly hooked. Cause you just don't get a game like that very often where you're, yeah. where you play as the, the bad guy or not really, I don't know. It's just, it was really cool. And the story is really cool. Like all the, the little flashback missions were um, interesting. And the ending I thought was pretty awesome. Definitely don't yeah, want to spoil dude, it. Cause and it's it, so cool. Yeah, and it's it's a really really short game. It's like five hours, maybe four hours. Um, yeah, yeah I, I I really enjoyed it. I'm, I enjoyed like getting bigger and bigger as the monster. Like you were almost like half a screen size at some points. Like and just going and through and just ripping and tearing apart like all the little soldiers was was awesome, huh? Rip and tear, rip and tear. <laughs> um, so yeah, just it was really so good. much. My my probably the biggest gripe was the fact that you didn't have a map yes but i guess I, I got lost quite a few times towards like kind of the end where you have to kind of backtrack at some point yeah. um as you unlock stuff so yes that that is probably the really the only gripe i have with the game mm -hmm. was was the no map kind of thing which is kind of crazy in that style again but i mean whatever i, I guess like as a monster you wouldn't have a map either. yeah i mean it makes sense as like a story thing but yeah it would having a map would have been nice but i thought there were some weird difficulty spikes too with some of the encounters you had yeah but nothing was ever too difficult like any yeah any there was a, super quick yeah there was a couple of spots where especially when you're fighting the mechs at some point yeah um and like the flying drones or whatever can kind of mess you up if you mm -hmm. don't take care of them quick enough so yeah there was there was a couple of um difficulty spikes i think yeah yeah What's your number four? I'm excited now. Number four is Mario 3D All Stars. Dang. Okay. Dude, you had I it mean, pretty high you know, up. You know how much I loved playing through all three of these. I mean, yeah. even, even Sunshine, which doesn't hold up. Um, it was fun, fun beating that one. Can't hold up if you never played it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched you play it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you, you played like, I mean, you beat these games. So. Yeah, beat them 100% in 64 and Galaxy. And Ga dude, Galaxy just, it's a phenomenal game. Like, yeah. I think this so probably good. would have been higher on my list if I had played through Galaxy. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, for a collection, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, they, they didn't really do much aside from up res them a little bit, but they didn't, yeah. like, you, you know, they didn't remake 64. And I think they should have. So as a question, yeah. it's okay, but yeah, I wish they really would have at least made, remade 64 mm -hmm. just because I mean, 
but I mean, for for what it is, like I feel like it, it holds up pretty pretty well. There's there's a couple yeah. of like camera stuff that's that's weird, um, which is understandable. It's a freaking N64 game, but right. Um, yeah, if they had, would have remade 64. That would have been pretty awesome. But maybe eh. they'll do that in a standalone release at some point for maybe $60. maybe maybe yeah. But yeah, I mean, sixty dollars. All three of these games. Even just on their own are really great. I know I give Sunshine crap, but it's a fun game. It's still weird that Galaxy Two isn't in there. Yeah, I don't yeah, think there's like any sense of why that shouldn't have been included. I don't know if they'll eventually add it at some point, but I don't yeah, that's so. just so weird. Like that's a game that a lot of people missed too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely did. I I played a little bit of Galaxy, uh, but yeah, I didn't even play two at all. And yeah, like you said, I think a lot of people just didn't play it. And I heard two just like streamlined and and did things a lot better than one. Yeah. So I'm I'm you know if that ever comes to the switch, I'll I'll get it. But yeah, kind of weird that it was not included in that collection. Yeah, that's very odd. Yeah. All right, we're we're getting down to it now. What's your number three? Number three, The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> What? Okay, yeah, I know where this is going. Okay, okay. The la- the Last of Us Part Two. It's it's the game that I did never, I never thought needed a sequel, but for what they did with it, I thought it was really smart. Um, just uh, spoilers for The Last of Us Two. Um, the fact the fact that they make you kind of really care about a character that killed Joel. Um kind of says something about just the writing and just the way they crafted this campaign um i mean because at the end of the day like i didn't hate either one of these characters joke between ellie and um uh help oh, me out here ellie and no. um abby abby like i i like them both and they they obviously they both had their reasons for doing the things they did um aside from the story wise i mean the gameplay was so much fun uh it's one of the only games i've ever really hate killing people because it's like so just visceral and yeah the way they did this game where you shoot somebody and they're like oh sarah you know they actually give you names of people that are kind of meaningless to the overall plot um but you still care and like feel like about it so yeah i I, it's yeah i think it's definitely better i think it's better than the last of us the original um gameplay wise story wise it's definitely a lot more going on i would say you said story wise there's a lot more going on yeah um i i loved it i mean it was yeah i mean i I loved it i i think it's a a great follow-up to one of the greatest games of last generation um well i guess the ps3 era whatever um but yeah i I loved it It it's good yeah i'm just trying to figure out what i know i know what your top two are i'm just trying to figure out what order uh (laughs) My number three is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Nice, nice. Um, I mean, we, we both have talked about how much we love this game, and yes, God, it, it might Did not expect it. Up. It might be higher up on my list if I have if I had finished it by the time of this podcast, but I'm still I'm still making my way there. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I'm still committed to to playing through it, and dude, I love this game. Love the combat. Yeah. The stories. I mean even the base building is pretty fun like i'm never a big base building guy yeah because i mean it's but... just yeah because you get like it unlocks quests that you can do um yeah it's cool like just kind of seeing your little community build yeah yeah it's just easy to do and like the rating like i know you weren't too hot on the rating at first but but just having this giant army with you yeah it's like <laughs> i actually I accidentally killed everybody in an entire castle <laughs> before the story told me to. Oh, um, I've done that. I think I know. I think I did the same exact thing you did. It was it was down south. I can't remember where it was. Yeah, because um, I did the same exact thing, and they were like, "I think there's a secret K or secret area underneath the monastery," and I'm like, "Yeah, there is." <laughs> killed everybody. <laughs> And you couldn't get to it at the time. Yeah, you couldn't get to it. I was like, "What? What is going on?" I was like, "Oh, 
shit. Yeah. <laughs> It, it tells me to to raid the place I just kill everybody at. And I'm like, what's going to happen? And yeah. I, and I went in and it tell me to like, to, to destroy these um like ballistic machines. Yeah. Yeah. So I went in and everyone was dead. So I just destroyed <laughs> them. And then, and then when I like started the raid, everyone was there again. So oh, I okay. Through and kill everyone again. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's buggy as hell. It's, there's a lot of glitches. There's screen tearing. That's really bad that I've started to notice. Mm -hmm. um but all that aside i kind of freaking love it man it's like probably my favorite assassin's creed i've ever played um granted and it's it's so different it's so different than like two and like the Ezio trilogy and then like even well four is more similar to this i think um because like like i said before if you were to call this valhalla without assassin's creed attached to it you don't you don't need it it's it's weird and friends but I really like like the the whole what what is it what is it the hidden ones are or you um or Hytham and oh, yeah but I can't the like killing like the order or whatever like going and finding the zealots around the map they're like these super hard boss fights essentially mm-hmm. um, and then getting the clues to find like kind of the higher you know, the hierarchy of of this order is really is really awesome. Um, yeah, it's a really intricate, but, intricate game, and I think that's the first time something like that's been in this series. I think I, I like I said, I haven't played Origins or um, Odyssey, so I'm not really sure. I don't um, think they had anything like that. Yeah, and just all the like, all the swords and stuff, and axes, and all the weapons you could find are super cool. Like upgrading your or changing like your bird um, is cool. I, I can't remember the name of it, but you can. I like, haven't done that yet. I yeah, you could. There's so. I mean, there's so much stuff that you can customize and like you can upgrade your horse to where it can swim in the water and stuff like that. It's didn't know that either. I mean, the, yeah. The, oh yeah. That comes in handy. So much to it. <laughs> yeah. There, there's so much stuff. And then like the whole, uh, I don't know. There, there's just so much in this game and I'm feel like I'm not even anywhere close to being done with it. Like I haven't finished it yet still. Um, mm-hmm. But I love it, man. I just, it, it's, it's, it's a really pretty game too. Um, definitely some nice like ray tracing and like, god god beams or whatever you want to call them is going on yeah um it runs pretty well for the most part other than like the screen tearing and stuff like it, yeah, it like, the frame rate, the fra- frame rate works pretty good it's funny i actually switched it over because I've, I've had it in performance mode i switched it over to quality mode and it looked worse so i switched yeah, it back I, I don't like quality mode. i just play performance i sw- yeah i switched it over the, like same as you and i was like I don't like this as much. It looked it looked reason. like significantly worse than performance, really? and I thought yeah, I thought it was really weird. Um, there is one weird glitch in the game. Every time I go back into the game or I die, um, Avor is like drunk. She's like like she's, she's like always waddling around like she's like and it's and you know you talk to somebody and it goes away, but it's it's a weird glitch, and I'm surprised well, it, it's not it's been fixed. It was frustrating because I was fighting a Zlot. <laughs> and it was dying every time I came back. I was drunk. Yeah, which I mean, you drink a lot in this game. Like, yes, yeah. I would need. I need an ale or whatever. Yeah, weird, weird. Even glitch. like the stupid, even like the stupid, like drinking games are fun. Like I'm always excited to do one because they're yeah. just fun to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great game. This is this was your number three. My number three. So this is my number two. Assassin's Creed. <laughs> okay. I wonder what your number one is, but yeah. um. So yeah, I mean, we, we literally just talked about it. So great, great game. I, I right. loved, I loved every kind of part of it so far. Yeah, uh, there's just so much. It, even like the little, I've talked about it before, but like the random little encounters you have with people, it, or, or like some are funny, some are really cool. Like there's just a ton of like different stuff that I, and then you don't really ever see twice. Like I, I did, the, I found this one where this these two brothers have like a grain business and they're they, ever since they, they have, ever since they built their silo to, to harvest the grain one one of the brothers harvests the grain and the other one sells it so he's got like salesman um, experience whatever and yeah. they've been, been fighting ever since one brother thinks he should have more because he puts more labor into it and the other one says well you know if it wasn't for me we wouldn't even be selling it and then you come into play and you just throw a, you think you take your torch and just blow up the silo like you throw it at it and it 
catches on fire and explodes and then like everyone comes together because like they're both their houses catch on fire and like you like the two families come together and they're like you know what we didn't need this silo we're we're family and we're it's breaking us apart and they're both, and then they're like cheering for it to to be burnt to the ground and like they're losing everything but they're just cheering and they're so happy because their family is like whole again yeah and i'm just like stuff like that is just so cool because you just it, it means nothing to to like the world because it's just ticking just in a, a spot on, on like the world events but they're so different that it's just really fun just to come across them yeah just those those cool little moments that you might not even see in the game yeah you know I, you might you might just miss it but what's yeah. what's your number two my number two is ori oh, okay <laughs> there this is going <laughs> uh, yeah yeah so you know what my number one is but last um, of us yeah so ori i mean like you i played the first one this year as well yeah um and that one was completely amazing and then this one just just took that and you know sped it up to 100 yeah you know the combat was was so much better yeah with like the I sword mean, that, sh- that, that Ori really gets combat. yeah yeah the sword like all the weapons the bow and arrow and you know just your your arsenal is amazing and the traversal just it's so seamless and yeah like I, i'm pretty sure like you get mostly everything you had in the blind forest within like the first yeah it's pretty couple quick. hours of the game and then you just get even cooler stuff yeah which is great for someone like us that just played blind forest mm-hmm. so it's it's weird going into the next game with nothing essentially so the fact that they sped that process up a little bit faster in this game to get to the new stuff was really smart on their part yeah, yeah they, they don't they don't take your time for granted no this game and it's it's a long game it's like 30 hours too or 20 yeah. 25 so it's really long yeah, 20 yeah 20 to 30 hours i think but even the story was really touching yeah like, man i mean the story in both of those games is pretty good but this one yeah this one kind of kind of took it up a little bit but yeah i mean this was such a great experience i mean aside from the frame rate issues when it first came out and the the crashing like yeah that's the only criticism i have and and that's completely ironed out now and yeah and now the game's running at 120 frames per second <laughs> in the series x so it's like ridiculous night and day yeah so uh I, yeah i mean obviously ori is my my game of the year um i loved it so much it was just such an incredible experience through and through um from the moment like that wolf attacks you just all, all like the the boss fight ch- chase scenes were were so much mm-hmm. fun to do, um, yeah, and just traversing that world and the hub world was really cool and just ev- everything about it. Like there wasn't an area I didn't like. All, all like aside from like the isn't there like a dark area in that game? But you yeah. get but you get a light eventually, so it, it it's fine. Um, yeah, I mean like that world. I, I love it. I'll I'll definitely play any Ori game that ever comes out. So yeah, game of the year, man, for me. Will the Wisps, good stuff. Nice. And the mine, as you know, is the Last of Us too, like like everybody else. But <laughs> I mean, it's one of those rare games where y- you play through this, you know, this twenty four hour game. You play through it in a week or less. Because every day you're just so excited to see where the story goes, or yep, or what's going to happen next, or or you know what what cool weapon or or ability you're going to get, mm-hmm. and you know there's so many ways you can take on every scenario. You you don't have to kill anybody in the game if you don't want to. Um, you can kind of sneak your way through, or you can just go in guns blazing and and like you said, like every kind of every death is critical. And yeah, you, you feel it. You know, whether it's through someone shouting the name or just of them like screeching out viscerally and then like just all the story beats i think it just it kind of never let up it just you know switching between um ellie and abby yeah like <clears throat> both were equally as fun and you know i, I was never like oh you know i wish i was playing as ellie right now or oh i, I wish i 
wish I was playing as Abby. It's like both had their own separate yeah. amazing experience. And I can only think of one time where like I wished I was back playing with Ellie, but that was just because there was a cliffhanger yeah that i want to see the resolution for which is crazy and i think that's why a lot of people hated that game or not hated but Mm -hmm. criticizes because like the biggest cliffhanger of the game and then you play for abby for 10 hours or something crazy yeah so it's a long time it's a bold choice and i I thought it was for the better i thought it was a fantastic story um if they do a last of us part three there better not be any sort of revenge because i I just don't want to, I don't want to hear it anymore. It's, it's, yeah. it's said and it's said and done. Um, but both characters got their redemption. Uh, they avenged their people that you can, you know, that you can say. Um, but yeah, I mean, what are so, so, like, so some of the highlights for me, I would say definitely like, like the high rise scene where, yes, where you're climbing and you feel like that sense of vertigo for, for Abby. Mm-hmm. um was, was really was really cool and just that whole area of like going through the 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 skyscraper and like part of it's kind of messed up because of um the bombings and then um and there's like a story behind that too of like the the soldiers coming through to bomb it uh and then there's you know you have to you have to find the gas mask and stuff and and stuff like that so yeah i mean what's what's yeah, i mean like the, obviously like i mean this was in the kind of the early trailers but like meeting the kind of meeting the scars for the first time um mm-hmm. or, or where or where you meet um uh, uh what, what's the brother uh what's what's the um the twins you meet is are they twins i can't remember the brother and sister yeah no no she's older she's older okay okay i can't remember their names but but that yeah, i mean every memo with them was really cool yeah uh, it kind of sucked. I mean, again, spoilers, but like, again, I can't remember the girl's name, but like you, you fight so hard to get her back to, to the doctor or whatever, to, to heal her, to heal her arm. And then she ends up getting shot at the end. So it's like, dang, yeah. man, what was the point? But I, that makes sense just because I think Abby definitely related more um, to the other character anyways, but just because they had that moment, those moments together. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But it is. yeah, I mean, yeah such a good game and i'm like kind of getting the spoilers for for a second so if you haven't if you haven't played the game it's not in any game spoilers but it's close to the end one of the highlights was was seeing ellie when she was kind of settled down Mm -hmm. and you just know that something's gonna happen and she's gonna go and then and then um what's his face comes uh um joel's brother oh oh gosh i can't remember. i'm just so bad at names for video games but <laughs> oh shoot well, that is sort of the j isn't it not jack ah, i can't remember his name now but his his brother comes and, and i'm just like looking and you and, and like, you don't, don't know go. if he's dead or not right um at that point right yeah, you don't know if he had died. Because you know he got, he got shot, shot, shot in the head. In the face. Or shot in the face, yeah. And it, I think it, well, it messed up, it hit something where he was limping and stuff, so he couldn't go after Abby. Um, so he, I, think was, he was, I think he lost an eye, too. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know if he lost, I don't think he lost maybe an not, eye. Maybe not, maybe not. But he definitely but, got severely damaged and hurt from and crippled because of it. Um, and, and yeah, he was just kind of saying you need to go after Abby because it's your responsibility to, to kill her or whatever. Um, I was just like, please, please just let the game end here. Yeah. Your... Cause like that whole, it, and it, I, I don't know. I, I didn't love the, the moment of fighting Ellie. Um, it was cool to see how like scrappy she is in like moving, but that whole boss fight was kind of, I don't it's know. It was just, yeah. It was kind of cheap and, and a little cheesy for me. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, just this that whole end sequence, it, the whole like latter part of the game, I really enjoyed. A lot of people didn't like going to Santa Barbara, or whatever it was. Um, was it Santa Barbara? I think oh, so. I can't that, that was it, it wasn't that long, like, but it wasn't long, it was like a couple hours maybe. Um, 
a lot of, a lot of people didn't think it was needed, but I thought it was a cool way to kind of because I mean if if Abby wasn't damaged or messed up, maybe well maybe I don't know he she Ellie still fought her at the end, but um, which was also a brutal kind of fight too, just yeah, them slicing each other up and stuff, but yeah, yeah. she she kind of had to have I guess gone gone through that for you to feel for her as a character. I mean, I don't, I guess for you to feel for her as a character, like that she was kind of captured for, I think months, a few months. Yeah, it was like, it was like two months, I think. Yeah. So that was, that was a cool section of the end of the game. Like regardless, just, just fighting through all those people and unleashing yeah. those zombies on, on everyone. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. That was definitely cool. And then just like that whole, like you, you free her. Um, and then she's just carrying. I feel bad for not remembering um, the person's name, but car- carrying um, down to the to the boat to whatever. And like the whole time, like Ellie's just walking so slow, and you're like, is she is she gonna do it? Is she gonna let her go? And then she's like, I can't let you. She's like, I know you can't. You know I can't let you go. I so like, come on, man. And Abby's like, she's like, I'm not doing this. And then. She, she puts the knife to the throat and then it's like, okay, this is going down. And I was like, man, I don't want any of them to die. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to see like the next one be with Abby, to be honest, and see see their trip to to the Fireflies or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think I think Ellie's story is done. She, I mean, all she can do is go back and and make amends and and find yeah. Dana. But yeah. But that's about it for her. I, I, I can't see them getting more out of that story. But yeah, that's that's my number one. <laughs> yeah, good games. Okay. So, so let's, let's recap our top five and then try to try to narrow okay. it down. So mine was at number five, Doom Eternal. Number four, Carry On. Number three, Last of Us Part Two. Number two, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And number one, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And my number five was Resident Evil 3, followed by 3D All-Stars, Assassin's Creed, Horrible of the Wisp, and then Last of Us 2. So we have the same top three. Okay. Um, All right, you so have Carry On and... Ori, Valhalla... Last of Us. I'm I'm just doing both our. What was your carry on? I'm doing my top five, and and then you add the two, the other two. Okay. So I had 3D All Stars and uh, carry on. I had Resident Evil Three. Okay. All right, we got seven. We got to turn into five. Okay. Um, I think I'm okay with cut and carry on. I think, and mainly because it wasn't even on your your top ten list. So, um, I think it's a an excellent game. Uh, one one of my favorite of this year for sure. Uh, it's it's short, but it's it's short and sweet. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, but like we said, it's got kind of some weird difficulty spike issues and then the whole no map thing is kind of annoying at some times especially towards the latter part of that game but um i think we can yeah. i think we can get rid of it okay and i i think we can get rid of resident evil 3 yeah unless unless you think um 3d all-star should go instead i personally liked mario 3d all-stars more than resident evil 3 I, I th- but they, like the thing is they're both remakes. They're both remasters. Yeah, I, I think three can go just because I mean we had two the year prior, and it just it was excellent, but it was short. It it they cut some stuff out from the original, which was kind of a bummer. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with I'm okay with this list. Yeah, and three All Stars was just it was just an exciting game to come out, you know, because. It had been so long since since any of these games had come to a platform. Yeah, yeah, it was just exciting just to see like a whole direct based on Mario, and this was long rumored, but it was it was good to finally see that happen. And then 
uh yeah it was yeah. a bummer that we didn't get like a proper remake for 64 at the least but i think it was still all it was still all around like a pretty solid um collection yeah and i'd even be okay with leaving this at number five yeah i think that's i think i would definitely take doom over this for okay. sure so 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 we have mario 3 all-stars at number five for our collective list this is between between both of us and then four is doom eternal yep so valhalla is definitely gonna be number three you think so Just, you think yeah, well yeah i think so well because I, mean, I had Ori's and valhalla is my number two but you had what last of us Ori and valhalla yeah we had a weird uh, order so yeah I, i'm okay with putting i mean we can change it but switch switch valhalla and last of us around then we'll look at that Okay, so that'll be Assassin's Creed Valhalla at number three. Wait, do we have six right now? No, we don't. Sorry, I just had... I think I had Valhalla twice. Oh, okay. I was like, God, no. Okay, so... (laughs) This is our current list. Um, (laughs) 30 All-Stars at five. Doom Eternal at four, Valhalla at three, and then we haven't decided yet. But then Last last of Us and Ori. I mean, you have this as your you have Ori as your number one. It's my number one, one, but I mean, which one do you think objectively is a better game? I mean, it's it's so hard to like because I mean they were both. I mean, the only reason I would say put Last of Us as number one was because Ori was so broken at the very beginning that, I mean, I got through it and it didn't really bother me too much aside from like the map took too long to open up. Um, And that was Mm -hmm. kind of frustrating. Um, I I could deal with like the frame rate issues for the most part, but that map just took too long for me sometimes. Um, So yeah, and the crashing did it. Yeah, it did crash a couple times for me. Um, The Last of Us, the Last of Us ran it ran flawlessly. The accessibility options were incredible. Like it it just felt like it's. I mean, it's kind of uh, what's what's the word? Um, Gold standard. Well, it's a lot of people say it, but it's a little bit like watching a movie like happen in front of you. Like it's just yeah, it's it's that good. And I just think that story is so good so good so i'm okay with switching it let's let's swap oh uh, yeah just I think, because you know, i think or just the bugs like you have to, you, that has to be although they fixed them but <laughs> i mean i'm not gonna back i'm not gonna go back and play it at this point but it, that, right. that i think it's that has of, to it's, has it's something to do bit. with it Yeah, the last of us was just pretty much it perfect to the whole thing. Uh, I know you didn't love like the hospital scene, right? With with the with the rat king or whatever. Right. Oh, oh, I do I forgot that was I forgot that I was I remembered it, but I didn't know if that was in Last of Us 2 or like another zombie game. <laughs> but yes, I did not like that part. <laughs> okay. I was okay with that part. I thought it was a interesting I just, boss I fight. Could, I didn't know you could jump into another room. I thought I just had this like circle strafe around. Oh yeah, I ran like hell when I first like I shot him a few times and then just ran and like jumped over a couple of desks and stuff and then just kind of flanked around him and just kind of kept doing that. Um, In that in that case, I think it would have been a lot easier. Yeah, but that that whole lead up to that point was pretty cool though. Just like like and it made sense because like as you know you, I mean it was like what one of the first infected so. It was, it was like kind of cool. ground zero. Of yeah, it was pretty cool to see that. Infection. Okay, so right now uh, at number five, Mario 3D All Stars. Four is Doom Eternal. Three is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Two is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And at number one is Last of Us Two. I like that list. I think that's that's. that's I think it's a good year. list. Yeah, right yeah. For for 2020, we had some good games. We had, we had some good games, and I definitely. 
so last year my my resolution for for gaming was to to play and beat more games and i think i definitely did that for sure i played yeah. a, a lot of games this year um game pass definitely helped as well shout out um, game pass. Sh- shout out our weekly shout out to game pass <laughs> um but yeah i mean 2020, 2020 as a year sucked but for gaming i, I think we it did pretty good i mean i think nintendo wasn't as great yeah, I mean Nintendo is not as great. They didn't have they had what Paper Mario. Uh, they, I mean they Animal had like Crossing. Pikmin Three, Animal Crossing. I mean they had, so they, they I mean they made a lot of money. They sold a lot of money. <laughs> and they made a lot of money with Animal Crossing alone. Yeah, uh, and a lot of money with 3D All Stars. But as like as a overall excitement for Nintendo, it was definitely definitely down for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean the the the, the Mario um, event was was cool to see the stuff that they announced. Um, and, I mean, Xbox didn't really have a ton going on for it either. They had Will the Wisps um, that came out, um, Gears like Tactics. Flight, yeah, Flight Simulator. Flight Simulator. Um, of course, Series X launched, and it's a pretty excellent mach- machine so far. But, you, I mean, the games are kind of what it needs at this point right now. So, um, And then PlayStation. Oh, yeah. you know, we didn't play, like, Ghost of Tsushima, um, which that would probably have been higher on our list if we had um what else did we not play we didn't have miles morales miles morales that probably would have been decently high um demon souls would be there for me probably demon souls so we missed we missed a lot of good games but um most of those games came to the ps5 anyway so but um and then we don't have cyberpunk on here yeah i don't know if we'll consider that next year i mean I think at this point I'm gonna wait until the Series X version comes out. Yeah, I'm definitely in that boat too. I'm just gonna wait. Yeah. So I'm maybe just... maybe we'll consider next year because that'll be like a, a a newish game for the Series X. Yeah, or or yeah, at least include it into our our uh, honorable mentions of previous year because yeah, I think I'm definitely just gonna wait at this point. And I and I really just aside from like elder scrolls i do not think i'm a huge like first person rpg fan like i don't really like fallout i mean i've played three and four and beat them um but did it was kind of a drag for me um and i didn't really like outer worlds either and that's yeah. a fallout kind of game and i just didn't like it i don't know what it is I about it in the same boat. i like third um, person rpgs yeah third person rpgs i love and then like elder scrolls like i loved oblivion and i loved um skyrim so it's not just first person it's just weird i don't know maybe it's just guns like first person guns if it's not like a proper shooter i guess Mm -hmm. i'm just not into it i don't know yeah i'm still trying to figure it out but i I know what you mean like i just couldn't i couldn't bring myself to play any more outer worlds um i did love fallout 4 but that was my first fallout so okay okay you know take that I mean, Fallout 4 was good, but it just wasn't like my favorite. Um, right. I just, I just thought it was cool because it was the first type of game. Yeah. That I played. Yeah. But yeah, to read to read the list one more time. Uh, number five, Mario 3D All Stars. Number four, Doom Eternal. Three, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Two, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And the official game of the year for the Gaming with the Bros cast is uh, Last of Us Two. So congratulations, Last of Us Two. Yahoo! It's a good game. Ooh, good game. You just won another. You won another minor award. <laughs> you won a, We won a minor award. Um, but yeah, that that's going to yeah, do the good. show. Uh, I knew it was going to be a long one today. Um, even mm-hmm. with even with no news or anything. But yeah, I appreciate everyone that if you if you caught it live, if you've been downloading the show, um, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we have officially renamed the podcast to just to reiterate it: Gaming with the Bros Cast. Um, I'll Pretty have good. some. Yeah, not not too big of a change. Um, I'm gonna have some new artwork coming out here probably within the next week to go coincide with the the new year. Um, I'm gonna get Brittany to do some shirts for us. Oh, so, boy. so um, yeah, look forward to that. And then of course, um, twitch.tv slash gaming with the Bruce cast. Uh, give us a follow. Um, and uh, and I think we had talked about doing some sort of giveaway at some point um, early next year. Yep. So we'll have to. Uh, figure out the logistics for that but um we'll, we'll do that via twitter 
at yeah, yeah. Rose on Twitter. Oh, and we'll we'll let you know the details of how you can uh, enter to win that um mm-hmm. that contest. But it'll it'll likely be follow us on Twitch and follow us on Twitter, and then you'll be nominated so or yeah. entered in. So pretty easy. But yeah, yeah, and, and you can follow us on Twitter at Gaming WT Bros. Um, and then if you want to email us, Gaming with the Bros at Yahoo.com. And I think that's it. Nick, anything else you want to say to the good people for the last episode of the year? You know, it's it's been it's been a hard year. There's been a lot of a lot of terrible things that have happened, but but yeah. I feel like twenty twenty one. That's our year. Yeah. Not just me not just me and you, Harrison, but yeah, everybody. Yeah. It's, it's everybody's year. Yeah, I hope year. so. Hope so. I was, I just got a message today that we're going to be in and still working from home till at least April first. So same for us. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I'm not mad about that. I, I've enjoyed it so far. Um, and yeah, look, I think good things are coming for the gaming with the Bros podcast. I think gaming so. With the Bros cast, I think we're going to make our way up and up in the world. We're, we're we're, I think our... we're over 750 downloads. So. Mm-hmm been crazy man we've we've had a lot this year uh so it's been i I've, I've lo- I love doing this podcast it's it's one of the highlights of my week and uh yeah it's a good time look forward to doing it 52 more times in uh in 2021 <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> all right broski i will see you um or i will see you guys and you next week on the show later 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 <laughs>